You may notice that you can't add lists and even native lists into components in Unity ECS. Dynamic buffers work almost the same way as lists. You specify the type that the buffer will be holding and then you can add it to entities the same way as you would do it with components. Let's say that our player has an inventory and we need to store a list of all of the items that he currently has. So I will create new script that will be the inventory system. The inventory system is inheriting from iSystem. In the void on create and on update we are just getting the entity manager and next we will create the player inventory entity. So I have defined a player entity variable, the type is entity, and in the onCreate function, using the entity manager, I am creating entity. And then I am also setting its name so that we can easily find it. And you can set names of entities only in Unity Editor, so that's why I have the Unity Editor if here. Now we'll need to specify the type that the dynamic buffer will be holding, so I will create new script for that. I called the script inventory buffer element, where we will not define the dynamic buffer yet, we will just define the element that the dynamic buffer will be holding. We can delete all of that stuff and we will need to add using unity.entities. And because we are working in the data oriented technology stack, this will be a struct and it will be inheriting from i buffer element data. So that's how we define a buffer element of the dynamic buffer. It has to be a struct, it has to be inheriting from i buffer element data and we can add any managed variables into it we want. So each of the items in our inventory will have some item ID, item count and you can add anything else you want. On the buffer element we can also specify the internal buffer capacity. The buffer capacity is not really limiting the size of the buffer. It is just telling it that when we have less than 20 elements in the dynamic buffer, all of the memory will be allocated with other entities in the chunk. And when the size of the buffer is greater than 20, the memory will be stored in the heap which is less optimized. But you really don't have to worry about the internal buffer capacity, you don't even have to specify it, but if you are specifying it, you should set it to the most likely size of the buffer. So let's say that the maximum size of the inventory will be 5, in this case I will set it just to 5. And now back in the inventory system, using the entity manager we can just add the buffer to the player entity. So we are using entity manager that add buffer and you can see that we are not specifying dynamic buffer of the type inventory buffer element. We are just specifying the type that the dynamic buffer will be holding and we are adding it to the player entity. You can see that this function returns as the dynamic buffer of type inventory buffer element. So you could also save it into a variable if you want. Now I will go to the onUpdate function, where I will be just checking if the player is pressing the leftmost button. If this is true, we can add some elements to the buffer. First, I am getting a reference for the dynamic buffer of type inventory buffer element, so that we can later add new elements to it. I'm also getting singleton of the input component, which we have been working on in one of the previous tutorials, so feel free to check it out. And the input component is just holding a boolean if we are pressing the leftmost button. So if we are pressing leftmost button and the item was not added yet, then we can just add it to the buffer. And because we already have a reference for the inventory buffer, we can do a bunch of stuff with it. For example, we can add new element to it, which you can see it is taking in the inventory buffer element. Or we can also clear the inventory buffer. We can get element at some index. We can insert elements to some index, we can get the length, we can remove some elements and so on. But right now we will be just adding new element. So like this we can add elements to a buffer. It works just the same way as list. First we need to add the dynamic buffer to the entity, then we can access a reference for it and we can add new elements into the buffer. I've just added a bit more logic into the onUpdate function. So when we add the element to the buffer, it means that we have added the item. And when we are not pressing the leftmost button, we can just reset the boolean. We can go to the entity's hierarchy and search for the player entity. And when we select it, yep, we can see that it is holding a dynamic buffer of type inventory buffer element. And because I've already clicked once, it is containing some of the elements. And as I'm clicking, you can see that it is adding more and more of them. So each of the elements in the inventory has its own item ID and item count and we can add as many of these as we want. 
Next, we could generate some random item ID for each of the inventory elements. To set random IDs of the items, I added using Unity.Mathematics so that we can use the random. Then on create, I'm initializing the random. And as we are adding the inventory buffer element to the dynamic buffer, we can specify the item ID. So I'm getting that from the random. And I have also set the item count to one for now. Yep, that was very simple. So now we can see that as I am adding the items, each of them has the item count on one and the item ID is always different. Next, when we will be adding new item, we'll loop through all of the inventory buffer elements to check if we have already added this element in the list. If this is true, we can then just increase the item count. I just had to change some stuff in the on update function. So first I'm generating the item ID the same way, just generating some random number. Then I'm looping through all of the elements in the inventory buffer. So we can just access that by inventory buffer length, which is size of the dynamic buffer. And then I'm checking if the item ID that we have generated is equal to the item ID in the inventory buffer on the index of i. If this is true, it means that we can just add the item count of the element, but we can't just change values of the inventory buffer. So for example, if I would do inventory buffer, on the index of i, I just can get the item count and item id, but I can't change it. So if I would do it like this, it doesn't work. So what we have to do instead is to cache the current element. So we are getting that from the inventory buffer on the index of i, and I'm saving that into inventory buffer element, which I called new element. Then I'm just changing the item count of the new element and I'm assigning the new element back to the inventory buffer on the index of i. This means that we have added the item, we can break from the loop, and if we haven't added the item yet, which means that the item ID is not yet in the inventory, we can just add it. So we are just looping through all of the elements of the inventory buffer. If the item ID is the same, we can just increase the item count. So as I click for the first time, it will add new element, and now you can see it as I click for the second time, we already had the element with the item ID on four in the list. So we just increase the item count. And as I am clicking further, you can see that it is increasing the item counts if we already have the item ID there. So like this, you could create a simple inventory system. But this is not the only way that you can create dynamic buffers. You can also create them using the entity command buffer. What the entity command buffer allows us to do is to queue up commands so that we can then execute them at the same time. To use the entity command buffer, we need to add using unity.collections and then we can just create the entity command buffer like that. And using the entity command buffer, we can add some buffer to a entity or we can append to buffer, which means that it is just going to add some elements to it. Or we can also set buffer, which I use just to clear the buffer. The entity command buffer can be especially useful for setting dynamic buffers in jobs, because in jobs you can't use classic entity manager. And there are definitely a lot more use cases for dynamic buffers. For example, for this simple AI, each of the AI has a dynamic buffer that is storing all of the waypoints as for where it should go next. So this AI has five waypoints with some coordinates, this AI has different waypoints and so on. You can see the dynamic buffers are really useful because creating a list of waypoints on each of the enemies or creating a list of the inventory items would be a lot harder without them. And don't forget to check this video on creating AIs using no mesh query. I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.